Hello Eagle fans, Spoken For Communications brings you this preview of North Carolina Central and Delaware State. It's homecoming 2012 here in the Bulls City. I'm Chris Hooks, play-by-play -play voice of the NCCU Sports Network, joined with the head coach of the Eagles, Henry Frazier III. Coach, again, you were entering this contest, a very crucial ball game in the league as far as battling for second place right now after the tough loss to Bethune-Cookman. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, it was, it was a heavyweight fight. I mean, uh, we, we definitely gave our best effort in on, on that day. You know, Bethune-Cookman was definitely the better football team on that evening. Uh, I was really proud of my football team because we played hard. We played hard. Uh, you know, it was up 28 to 17 up until about the four-minute mark, and some things happened and, it, and a couple late scores, but but it, we were going back and forth. And uh, I think the difference in the football game was clearly, uh, number one was the third down conversion. They were 10 for 18 on third down. Uh, number two, I think um, – you know, they had about seven plays where they had about 230 yards and seven and three touchdowns. And those explosive plays kind of did us in because we wanted to make them work for things, not just have one, you know, one hitters. And, and that's what happened. And, and then the last thing was injuries. I mean, we we had about six starters by midway through the third period that was out. And at the end, you know, just we just couldn't overcome those things. But at the end of the day, Bethune Cook, we made the plays when they had to. Their defense was, was stout. And defense do win championships, and, and my head goes off to them. But I think we, you know, I think they know they were in a football game. Well, you know, we definitely swung, got our punches in, but uh, they got a couple more at the end of the game, and uh, they they came out on top. You know, coach, one thing I was really impressed with with the squad is is how poised they were. This is a stage we hadn't been in since the 2005-2006 campaign. Now, none of those guys were here, but again, this program hadn't been in the situation like they were last week against Bethune-Cookman and like they will be uh, against Delaware State. I mean, we're playing for some in some big football games here. We are, and, and I've always said, when you know, you're playing meaningful football games in late October, early November, it's, it's awesome, man. You know, you work towards those things, and, and we're, again, we're in, we're in a meaningful football game, and, and we still have a lot of left, you know, a lot of things to play for, and we have a lot of football left to be played, so, so I'm excited and it's my job to pick my team up and motivate my team and get them ready to play for homecoming this weekend and and we better be ready because Delaware State is a very very good football team. Kermit Blunt has done a tremendous job at Delaware State he's got them rolling in the right direction and what does that say about both you and him both of these teams were picked in the lower portion of the MEAC. We're two old coaches you know they kind of know a little bit about football a uh, tremendous amount of respect for coach Blunt I've known Kermit a long time uh, I consider him one of my mentors because he's older than me he's much older than me and uh, I definitely consider him one of my mentors he's always given me advice has always kind of been a phone call away you know when I got started in this game and um, as a head coach and and I respect him and, and I knew it was just a matter of time before before he get them going in the right direction and and uh, it's going it's going to be fun and, and to go out against him and match our wits because you know I do have a lot of respect for what he has done when he was at Winston and I was at Bowie and we kind of used to go at it and, and now Delaware State in North Carolina Central. Look at Delaware State, Nick, Nick Elko is, is really the guy that, that, that uh, shines for them at quarterback. What makes him so good and, and how can we slow him down? Well I think he has a great offensive coordinator in A.J. Arrington. You know A.J. is a good one. You know, AJ. You know, he. You know, he's been. He was good when he was at Virginia State. You know, as and he, when he was at Winston as offensive coordinator, and Virginia State is the head coach. So, so AJ kind of knows a good thing with that rhythm and passing. And and and, and one thing I got a lot of respect for with uh, with AJ and with Coach Blunt. You know, you know they'll they'll adapt to their personnel. You know, if, if Kermit got some bruising backs, you know, he'll pound you. You know, if he got some spread out guys like when he had Toy Woodbury, and you know, he'll spread them out and let guys do their thing. And I think that's fun for, for a player to play for a coach that, hey, he's going he's gonna to not cater, but he'll, he'll adjust to some of my strengths. And I think that's a sign of being a good coach where you're not stuck on this is how we do it, my way, highway. But it's like if you get a special player, let that special player do his special thing. And that's what he's done with Elko. Elko is a special football player. And uh, they run that three-step game. They run that rhythmic passing game. And it's almost like a run for them. So, so we, we got to be able to get our defense alignment. Got to be able to, you know, be smart, get their hands up. You know, we have to rally in the secondary. Because you know, they're going to they're gonna complete passes. But you got to make sure that five yard don't turn into 15, 20, 30 yard and touchdowns. So we able to rally, make tackles, and, and then when they do take a shot and they do do a five step game, we got to get to the quarterback. If we can do those things, then we got a shot at slowing them down. Well, you talk about uh, his weapons around him, Travis Tarpley and Justin Wilson, two redshirt seniors. I mean, they've been around this league for a while, and they've made a lot of plays. They are. They are. When you watch them, it's like human highlight films because they they're doing all types of special things on the field. And and, and, and if you're a defensive back. It's one of them games you got to get excited for because you know you're going to get 
a, a, a ample opportunities to make a play on the ball and a chance to play against two of the top receivers in the conference. So if you're a defensive back, defensive backs, they don't like to make their money tackling. They like to make their money covering. So we, we're going to have our work cut out for us in terms of covering. And one of the luxuries is we didn't get any injuries in the defensive backfield. So everything else, you know, we have injuries in every other position except defensive back. So, so we'll see how they play. We'll be playing a lot of nickel, a lot of dime. And uh, just just trying to trying to get to that quarterback and try to slow those those special guys down. Well, Malik Cromarty had a great ball game against him last year. Two interceptions. He had an interception last week against uh, Bethune Cookman. So hopefully he can keep that up. He's tied for number one of the MEAC in that category. As we switch over to offense, Jordan Reed, uh, he threw two picks late. I mean that was you can kind of throw those out. He continues to get better, and, and how does he progress here in game number nine this year? You, he's going to have to become more of a weapon with his legs, and I'm hopefully he can get healthy. He's still about 75 percent. He's still kind of limping a little bit, but but when we get him going where he's a threat to run the ball as well as throw the ball, it changes how people play us. They were able to do some things defensively because they knew he wasn't going to run the ball. So as he starts to get a little healthier, we'll start making some different calls and putting him in some different situations, getting him on the edge, getting him doing some different things. And then that makes teams cover the entire field because right now they don't have to cover everything in defensing us because they, you know, it's on film that he's been limping around. But I think he's really getting close to being healthy and then we can open up the playbook a little bit more and, and allow Jordan to do some of the things. And Jordan sees some of the things that he could do because he has the power to check. But, you know, from a physical standpoint, he's, just, he's not healthy enough to do it. All right, Coach, let's bring that hammer and, and finish the weekend in second place. Yeah, we're going to oil it up a little bit this week. We, you know, it was a little rusty down in Daytona Beach with Sandy and all that rain. <laughs> so we'll oil the hammer up, and we'll get it ready to be swing it down here in Durham for homecoming 2012. All right, Coach, thanks for time. Best of luck. No problem. That's Head Coach Henry Fraser III, Spoken for Communications, because every child deserves to be heard. We'll, have, we'll be on the air at 1.30 on Saturday afternoon for the Champs pregame show. Join myself and Joe Simmons as we get you ready for the 21st matchup between Delaware State and North Carolina Central. Enjoy homecoming 2012.